My name is Jordan. I'm here at the Old Hundred Mine in Silverton, Colorado, almost two miles above sea level, and this is the chemistry question. We have all experienced temperatures below zero Celsius or below zero Fahrenheit, but those temperatures were still above absolute zero. But what about temperatures below absolute zero? That's impossible, right? Prepare to get rid of everything you understand about temperature. First, negative temperatures are really hot. In fact, they are hotter than any positive temperature. Why? Energy will always flow from negative temperatures to positive temperatures, and we know from thermodynamics that energy flows from high concentration to low concentration, meaning heat goes from hot substances to cold ones. We'll hit a paradox at this point if we view temperatures as the average kinetic energy of molecules, which is how we typically think of temperature. So we have to think about it a bit differently. Let's think of temperature more as the relationship between enthalpy and entropy. For positive temperatures, if more energy enters the system, entropy increases. In other words, the hotter the system, the more chaotic. We see this with water. Cold ice is more ordered than warm water, which is more ordered than hot steam. Negative temperatures are the exact opposite. If one adds energy to the system, it becomes more ordered. A consequence of the second law of thermodynamics the entropy of a closed system must increase, so if a substance with negative temperature comes into contact with a substance of positive temperature, energy will transfer from the former to the latter. Most classical systems cannot achieve this negative temperature, so don't get your hopes up of experiencing it for yourself. For the most part, negative temperature is a quantum phenomenon. Why is this? Well, in order to achieve negative temperature, one must first make the system reach maximum entropy, which can only occur in a system with a limited number of energy states. Maximum entropy would occur when there is an even distribution of energy states in the system, meaning there are roughly equal numbers of particles in both low and high energy states. After that, entropy would decrease as more and more particles would converge in the higher energy states. This is where we must have negative temperatures in order to obey the third law of thermodynamics, that the entropy of a pure crystal at absolute zero is zero. Since the substance is decreasing in entropy, it must be approaching absolute zero. But it cannot be decreasing in temperature because its energy is increasing. So we must use negative temperature to show an increase in temperature, yet a decrease in entropy. So, do we ever encounter negative temperatures or see their effects? Yes, we do. Lasers rely on something called population inversion, whereby more particles are in an excited state than in a lower state. Thus, the system has passed maximum entropy, and an increase in energy can only decrease entropy. One could get from Las Vegas to Los Angeles by traveling east, by traveling around the entire Earth first. Traveling so far east that one ends up west of the starting point. In the same way, to reach below absolute zero, we need to get to the highest possible temperature and then suddenly cross to the lowest negative temperature and start trending again toward absolute zero. <laughs>